Declan Rice, Broken, told the Athletic have done a think piece as to why Edu actually left Arsenal and what the next steps are. And it's been revealed why Benjamin Sesko of Leipzig, who Arsenal pursued in the summer, did not want to join Arsenal, allegedly. People deluded. I'm back again, as usual. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and in some cases, good night. Hope you're all doing well and safe. Do me a favour. If you haven't hit the sub and like buttons, make sure you do such. Most importantly, appreciate you lot's uh, support. Get the creative juices flowing and make sure you leave a comment, people. Now, if I share my screen with you guys and we crack straight on into this, on the eve of us playing Chelsea, you don't want to hear this. I won't go as far as to say Arsenal have had an injury crisis, but injuries have been affecting us. And it's almost like when we get one player back, there's others gone, you know. Declan Rice, as you can see there, broken toe. Odegaard's just come back. While he's not a significant player like that, Zinchenko, Gabriel Jesus, actually Bakayo Saka, uh, Saliba's been suspended, Gabriel's been carrying up, Calafuri and Timber, and also Benjamin White. So, yeah, man, you know, we... we Boy, if this was Sunday League, you wouldn't have a team for Sunday. But nonetheless, the Daily Mail's Sammy Moke Bell has said, Declan Rice battling with a broken toe with Mikel Arteta sweating on the midfielder's fitness ahead of Arsenal's tricky trip to Chelsea. Now, Declan Rice, please take the painkilling injections. We need you in midfield. One area that looks decent at Chelsea is Lavia and actually Caicedo together. You need to show Caicedo why you're the big dog and only Rodri can talk to you. He's also been named in the England squad. I don't know if that's something to read into, people. Um, apparently, Arteta will give Declan Rice every opportunity to prove his fitness ahead of Sunday's clash. Apparently, people, you know, we all know he suffered this injury allegedly against Newcastle. He did not play in our defeat to Inter Milan midweek in the Champions League. And it's under Understood Rice has suffered a broken toe. The blow will be assessed in the next 48 hours, but the Gunners boss is ready to make a late decision on the availability of his key midfielder. The severity of the problem is such that Rice could yet play in the game at Stamford Bridge, particularly given the magnitude of the game following a run of three league matches without a victory, which is, on the face of it, doesn't seem like anything to panic about. But with us wanting to win the league and everything that's at play, Arsenal are in a crisis at this moment in time. We need to react against Chelsea. I think we're beating Chelsea purely by blind optimism, but purely, I believe, we can't go out like that. If we lose to Chelsea, then I might go towards the out campaign because then I think the ground is too much to, to 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 make up, I'd say, chasing the title, regardless of where City are, regardless of what Liverpool are doing, regardless what the point Stanley is saying. Once again, Rice has been included in the England squad to face Greece and Ireland despite the injury. But Kyle Saka, Declan Rice, would it kill you lot to once pull out of the England squad, please? The other players do it. Why can't you, people? So, yeah, by God's grace, Declan Rice will be all right, people. Um, again, if we get into this Edu kind of stuff, people, again, strap up because we're going to be here for a while. Inside Arsenal's, well, Edu's Arsenal exit, shock amongst staff and immunity. I can't say that word. Apologies over transfers and what it means for Arteta. Now, I've always said I think Edu did a lot good and a lot bad. A bit like Mikel Arteta, it's a mixed bag. I do think, though, while I... Don't think Edu was anything to scream and shout about. And I do believe if Arteta is here on the long term, I know some of you don't hear that he needs his own David Dean. I just feel when things go right, it's all Mikel Arteta. When things go wrong, especially on the recruitment front, everybody blames everybody but Mikel Arteta, where we all know where you look at the signings of Califuri, David Raya, Kai Havertz, ripping up contracts like Aubameyang. It hasn't at the time always been unanimously something that the Arsenal executives have want to do. But Arteta, apologies, has got his way, people. If we, I'm trying to cut out as much of the tosh as I can, people. Allegedly, Arsenal were aware of Edu's ambitions to work in a role with true international scope and held discussions regarding his future in the weeks preceding the news of his departure. So they knew he was getting itchy feet. But there was always hope he would stay. For the wider staff, including players and several of Edu's recruitment team, it came as a shock. Many of them first heard of Edu's departure via the media. The 46-year-old had had a fortnight's leave to attend to personal matters back in Brazil. As his absence continued, rumours obviously took shape. 48 hours after the Newcastle game, we saw the rumours and, you know, the Daily Mail got the exclusive. The, you know, the Athletic was shortly after. And since then, it was officially confirmed on Arsenal.com. Apparently, he will serve a six-month notice period 
should effectively on guard and leave people before taking up his role. So can we get new contracts for Saliba, Saka, Gabriel, Gabriel Martinelli sorted? I don't know, people. And if there is any transfers in the workings can we get them tied up people you know we all know arsenal need to look into the future apparently the club are committed to hiring a new sporting director to work alongside arteta although the exact remit of the role is yet to be defined when eddie was promoted from technical director to sporting director in november he assumed responsibility for arsenal's women's team and their academy the club are now considering a return to the former setup with the incoming sporting directors focused primarily on the men's first team fair play people we all know the timing wasn't great people we all know marine kess is decent is, is quite good apparently you know marine kess and edu have um worked on deals before where you look at Tavares to Forrest and Matt Turner to Forrest. Apparently, Arsenal held talks with Forrest over Eddie and Ketia and Aaron Ramsdale, people. We all know Eddie flew back to Europe as well, people, ahead of Arsenal's main travelling party from the American tour and was a guest of Marin Cass's birthday. Fair play. Eddie was one of the invitees, uh, as well as their mutual friend, Kaya Jarukin. Fair play. I'm not going to get into that. We all know Edu is settled in London. We all know he's doing his thing. Apparently, though, it said he wanted more responsibility. And we've got to remember, you know, whatever you have to say about Edu, he's wanted by PSG, sought to, 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 to lead this new kind of thing. He won an award. It seems like he's rated in the world of football more so than us fans, essentially, people. Um, so it is what it is in that regard. As stated, Eddie's new role has not been finalised, but informal discussions over potential transfer plans have already taken place. Sources familiar with both Arsenal and Forest, who have asked to remain un unnamed to protect relationships, have expressed a word of warning. Edu is departing a stable environment for one which is considerably, considerably more chaotic. His diplomatic skills are likely to be tested. Well, I mean, right now it's clearly stable, but when Eddie walked in, to be fair, it was a mess as well. So... I wouldn't say that's a thing. Apparently, he has grown frustrated with some of the limitations on his role at Arsenal. He's expected to have more powers at Forest, in part, probably due to his close relationship with the owner. Those who know him believe he is seeking more autonomy at Arsenal. There is not at Arsenal, there is now considerable oversight and due process on all matters related to transfers. Having to seek broad approval on transfer activities can mean, however, that certain deals become protracted. Edu agreed a move for Bologna defender Calafuri, but the Arsenal board were only prepared to sanction it if a sale balanced the books. In the end, the club only pushed ahead on Calafuri in July when Real Madrid emerged as a potential rival bidder. So again, when people, maybe it indirectly goes to Mikel Moreno and the speed it took to do that, maybe the speed of finding that Nico Williams or whatever, maybe... That is, to be fair to Edu, maybe his hands have been kind of tied in that. Edu and Arteta have always enjoyed an excellent personal relationship, but in recent windows, members of Arsenal's coaching staff have exerted an influence over first-team recruitment. That came to a head late this summer when the club found themselves embroiled in a convoluted, you know I can't say that word, deal for Joan Garcia, a goalkeeper at Espanyol in Spain's La Liga in the final 48 hours of the window. An exacerbated Edu had to extract Arsenal from that negotiation and pivot to signing Bournemouth's Neto on loan. So the first team recruitment staff are or coaching staff are taking more more of more of a role in which you could say you know if the coaching staff which extends to our you know have a hand over the players then they're more likely to work but this just tells you Eddie's powers are being diminished and really and truly he's a puppet to do the bidding of people whose voices are stronger than his even though he has to share some of the successes and blames um in his proposed role with the Minkaracus group Eddie would take a role where he is likely to have regular direct contact with the owner he'd possess greater authority Arsenal feel they are well equipped to deal with his departure, but the timing of it is not ideal. Nothing's ideal. What you know, our results are not ideal. Some would say when you gave Mikel Arteta the new deal with what he was facing, if he didn't win a league title, was an ideal. Is there ever an ideal time in life, much like football? And we all know there's been a couple of other changes at boardroom level. Um, it also comes in the middle of the season, two months before the start of the transfer window. Bearing in mind, Mikel Arteta recently signed a new deal. Next week, Arsenal's football leadership team, led by Arteta, Garlic and Vice Chair Tim Lewis, will meet with the owners, the Cronkies, to outline squad building plans for 2025. I hear that, but it just feels like this sort of stuff comes out whenever we are in a bit of a barren run. And you're seeing several Arsenal names linked with players. You know, we're linked with Embuermo now once again. We'll get on to Sesco. Jokeres rumours are gaining intensity. Apparently, um, 
Eddie would have, would have been a key part of those discussions. Instead, Jason Ito is likely to represent the recruitment department. He began at Arsenal as a video analysis and worked his way up to become Eddie's right-hand man. Last year, a reshaping of the recruitment team led to Ito being named assistant sporting director with James Ellis becoming head of recruitment. That recruitment department is part of the legacy Edu leaves behind him. One of his first major decisions was to overhaul previous scouting network, building the team to his specifications. That core team remained in place. We all know Richard Garlic left people. We all know there's a search for, you know, a new woman's goal. He said, I mean, manager. So there's been a lot of things going on. Apparently, Arteta will play a role in those discussions, which is surprising to some. Conventionally, the sporting director sits above the manager in a club's hierarchy. Arsenal, though, consider the roles to operate on the same level. The relationship between the manager and sporting director is of critical importance. So, again, how much can you blame Edu and how much voice and clout does he have? Don't get it twisted. Would have loved Edu to pull rabbits out the hat, you know, find Brazilian emerging targets, you know, get better in, ter get better in terms of outgoings. You, you know, he's played a part, but you, you struggle to look around and think, what is Edu's mark in the same way you had it with David Dean and, and, and especially other sporting directors at other clubs? We all know Edu and Arteta had a great relationship. That doesn't mean much, people. Um, we're looking for a sporting director. Whoever the hell that is, I'm not too sure. I mean, Edu, you have helped your, you know, you have done your part to help us in part, people. Um, so, yeah, people, apparently we plan to get a replacement for him or begin the search for such or intensify that search next week. So we'll have to see, people, what's going on. Fair enough. And apparently, you know, Edu leaving a, a, a couple things where he's able to visit Brazil more frequently. He's able to work remotely. And obviously, he's got more greater authority. I can't begrudge Edu for going and leaving and doing that. On the topic of Benjamin Sesko, apparently Red Bull Leipzig forward Benjamin Sesko was reluctant to join Arsenal last summer amid concerns he'd be second choice to Kai Havertz. Sesko emerged as a key target for the Gunners during the previous transfer window, but the 21-year-old stayed in the Bundesliga, signing a new contract with Leipzig. Arsenal retain an interest in the Slovenian international who has scored seven goals for his club so far this season. However, Sesco is understood gave serious consideration towards joining in the summer but held reservations over whether he would be a regular in the starting 11 with the Gunners making it clear he would not be a guarantee to play ahead of Havertz who finished last season as the central striker. Arsenal were minded to pay his release clause before Sesco's initial hesitation became apparent. Sesco current, currently has a buyout clause of 55 million with the Gunners monitoring his progress closely ahead of next the next two transfer windows. Now, apparently the price has dropped for Jokerez from his, well, from his initially from 100 million euros, which is his release clause, to 85 million, which equates to 85 million. Apparently, it could be done for around 60. I don't know how room, how strong that rumor is. Sport in Lisbon, if you the more that that man is scoring and being the name on everyone's lips, surely you're gonna want top money, especially if he wants to join Ruben Amarin at Man United. You know, Man United being a British club have money. Now, on one hand, I get it, Sesco. You want to be guaranteed football. You want to develop. I do think at times you haven't even always been the first choice um, at Leipzig um, and all of those things. And Kai Havertz could be an issue in itself. I think it was an issue with nothing to do with Kai Havertz, but I think his form made the Arsenal decision makers a bit more complacent in their intensity to want to sign a striker in the summer. I also understand he wants to play games and the move, whether it's to Arsenal or another top club will happen. But being devil's advocate and as a fan, people, and a bit of banner, big up Kai Havertz. But if you're meant to be this top striker, yeah, and you relish fighting a next man, much less Kai Havertz, who isn't a natural striker, and that's your bread and butter, you come up as a striker... Have you really got the mentality? I don't know. 55 million could be right up our street for the 21-year-old, who I'm still a big fan of. Don't get twisted. If I, in an ideal world, for me, Isaac's the number one, people. Um, he currently has a buyout clause of 55 million, so you'd expect a lot of clubs, not just Arsenal, to be looking at that. Thomas Partey has not been called up by Ghana for the national team people for the upcoming international break. And apparently the Ghana boss has said, I had confidential talks with Thomas. I'm a coach who likes to protect the players, so I hope for your understanding. We're always open for him to return. I hope that the things we talked about he'll be better in and that he'll join the team maybe in the next window in March. So yeah, big up party. I don't want to, you know, touch wood, pause. He stays fit. He's been one of our best players, one of our best central midfielders, and hopefully he stays fit. And we know Thomas Partey is a unicorn, you know, again, 
he does things that the other midfielders can't exactly do. And whether he's playing right back or in central midfield, he's doing all right. And let me know you lot's thoughts. With him being 31 years of, of age, and, and I think turning 32 next year, would you give him a new contract, especially because of his form? It's that age-old thing, a player playing out of their skin in the last year of their deal, right? Uh, Manchester United could be set to make a move for Jokeres to try and reignite the forward with Ruben Amarin in the summer. Arsenal and Chelsea are also interested people. Uh, Benjamin Sesco, we've gone over that Arsenal apparently are monitoring such people, so we'll have to watch that closely. We're still linked with Leroy Sane, as it appears that him and Bayern Munich are at loggerheads and currently have, you know, a disparity in relation to giving him a new contract. They've still got Coleman, Gnabry and Sane to deal with. Apparently, he, you know, they don't really want to pay him what, what he could be worth. He could be a free agent. Manchester United and Arsenal are all monitoring him, people. So let me know your thoughts on what we've gone over with Edu. Let me know your thoughts on Sesco, on Jokerez, on Sane, on Declan Rice and on Thomas Partey. Most importantly, how are you feeling about the Chelsea game? Do you have any confidence? And what do you think is the knock-on effect if we fail to win? As I said, like, comment, subscribe. Appreciative of you lot for your consistent support. Stay safe. Stay blessed. Peace. <laughs>